We call this the basic circuit um, because it, it's pretty much, it, it gives you an overview of the whole structure upon which everything that you're going to learn about ground fighting and BJJ in particular is going to be based. So it really, it's, it's just showing me to go from the top, we're going, to, we're going to be on the top. When someone's mounting you, David's doing one of the most basic escapes, just called the bridging escape. Once he's got me off, I've got him in the guard. He knows he has to then pass my guard to get to side control. From side control, he then mounts me, and then the fight's been totally reversed, and then I do it. I take him off the mount, then I pass his guard, get to side control and transition to the mount. So it's really the, the, the fundamental framework upon which everything else is pinned. Later on, then, of course, he'll learn, you know, the 30 or 40 or 50 things to do from when I am in his guard. I'll learn all the same kind of counters to all those things, same thing from side control. So it's the kernel from which almost everything else is going to grow. We start it like this. I'm on the mount. For one reason or another, when you start the drill, I might start by putting a hand in for a choke or I've got it, my hand on his neck. But an important point is how do I get to the mount? I almost certainly come from side control. So later on, you'll see as we pass through the drill the second time when it's my turn to do it, my arm is already in range of David. It's, it's easier for him to grab. But when you're starting out, the person on top puts one hand on your opponent's neck or on their body. He traps it immediately, locks it to his body. So I can't use it as a post out there like we did in the mount to back drill. I could put my foot out though, so he slides his foot up and traps my foot. So this post is gone, that post is gone. If I was very athletic, I could possibly do that. So by lifting his hip up high, that's why we call that the bridging escape, now my hand can't be used here and he can roll, nothing I can do about it. Off I come, I now have David in my guard. He wants to pass, so he goes through the basic passing that we covered in the top control drill. He opens my guard up, he does a basic pass. When he gets to side control, he switches his base, just like we did in the basic top, top control drill. He mounts on top of me, but I'm already thinking about trapping that arm because I know I don't want him to complete his mount. I lock up the same side foot, so if I have this arm, the logic is that I retain this foot. I've now got to kill that hand. That's where my big bridge comes in. And then I roll him off to the side. He closes his guard. I get my posture. I pass his guard. Come around to the side. Lock up my side control. Switch my base. Mount on top. And we're right back to where we've started. So both of us have had practice at getting our opponent off the mount, passing their guard, transitioning from side control back onto the mount. Very good. The key point, one of the key points that a lot of people miss is when I'm starting the drill, I'm gonna give him that hand, okay? But later on, as I'm coming from side control, by this point, David's very aware that I'm mounting, so he's not gonna let me, I may have got the mount, but he's not gonna let me establish my base. He's already got my arm locked up, and I'm probably already falling to my left. So that's a small detail, but it just gets you into the mindset of starting to look ahead a little bit. Think about what you need three or four or five seconds from now in the present moment. And I'd add to that that um, what you're seeing in these lessons, in these first lessons, are all about positional control. BJJ grappling is all based on positions. Everyone looks for the candy. Everybody wants to go right to the finish, and you watch the UFC, and you see the triangles, and the cool arm bars, and the leg bars. But the real way to be able to execute that is to be able to have the positional control. You first control the position, you can dominate the position, then you can pick whichever of your arsenal finishes that you want. So you're noticing we're spending a lot of time in these first lessons on how to control the position, what the positions are, and how to maneuver between them. I'd also just add for your practice, as you become more experienced with your partners, if you're a better grappler, you can modify these drills and you can change the guard pass. So it's a different guard pass than you come, or a different style of mount. What this is teaching you is how you can loop together and put something in an ending loop that you can practice and practice and practice and drill non-competitively, but so you can, it's a great warm up and it's a great way to uh, establish your position. We need to develop that connectivity between positions. So it's you know, very much this, this idea of working on transitions. And we're gonna be putting up quite a few video clips specifically on intermediate and advanced level transition training. 
but none of that's going to make sense until unless we have a really good grounding in what we've just done here just the basic positions of side control north south the mount basic close guard we need to get these things down and have a good understanding of them before we can move forward there's actually just one more thing i thought i'd mention whenever you're you're doing the mount and i see this with certainly <coughs> beginners a lot there's always a tendency to get sloppy and let the feet drift out Especially when you're thinking ahead in, your, in a drill where you know you're not really going to keep the mount because the you know the person's going to take you off. But it's very important that, especially when you're doing drills, that you do everything perfectly. If you can't do every part of a move perfectly in great detail when there's not a competition, when you're actually just doing the drill, you're not going to have a prayer of getting it right uh, when you're actually competing. I know John has given the example of uh, a ballerina. You know, when, when someone is studying ballet or dance, you can tell them when they're walking down the street because they're walking down the street in a particular kind of posture, they're on balance. They're living that 24-7. They're not saving the, doing it right just for when there's a performance. And you need to do that too. When you're doing your practice in here, you've got to get it perfect during practice. And the most common mistake I see in this is the feet drifting away. You're not really mounting. Whenever you mount, tuck the feet in under, under the butt, and that's the way you control the mount.